Hi, and welcome to RST Forum's Tech Talks. Today, we are talking about SDN. Software-defined networking has been around in the industry for quite some time now. I think it's a good time to put some limelight on it and see what it is bringing to the table. SDN has been a frequent buzzword in almost all aspects of the networking industry. Be it plain software-defined networking, software-defined security, software-defined data center, software-defined WAN, and the list goes on and on. It has been called a disruptive technology, a revolutionary approach to networking rather than an evolutionary approach. It is a technology that thinks out of the box and completely redesigns your networks as we know them. It is a bunch of technologies beautifully working together to deliver the future of networks. SDN is here and it is here to stay. Let's embrace it. To understand SDN fully, we first need to understand what was the need for it. What's wrong with legacy networks that we had to take up such revolutionary steps and approach to today's networking that we had to flip it on its head. Today's networks are made up of networking devices as we know them. Routers, switches, firewalls, load balancers, you name it. These devices are extremely intelligent devices. They have their own little brains called the control plane. These brains let the devices talk with other neighboring devices, extract forwarding information from them, create databases, select the best parts from the databases, and push these best parts down to the data plane, the body of the device. The data plane is what does the actual forwarding of packets from one port to another port with the help of the forwarding tables provided by control plane. Now, since every device is intelligent, it has to be configured and managed individually. Now, with hundreds or even thousands of such devices in your network, managing them can be a pain. Now, as and when a network scales, its complexity increases, its configurations increases, its management increases. And getting it done individually on a per device basis can start getting on your nerve. And this is not even one time config we are talking about. Large networks carry a large number of policies implemented inside of them in the form of configurations. Policies such as firewalling policies, quality of service policies, and load balancing policies tend to pile up over time in your networks. And since your business today is so fast paced, you need to alter these policies from time to time. Again, individually and usually manually on each device. A point comes where your networks become so rigid, you fear adding more policies to your network, thinking it might affect some other ongoing policy. This has to stop there has to be a better way to manage these large amount of devices and their policies, preferably automatically. SDN brings you exactly that. It physically separates the control plane from the data plane of the device. It puts all the control planes onto a single controller. The controller still does the same job as that of an individual control plane. Only now, it has to do it for a large number of devices rather than just one device. It creates forwarding tables and pushes them onto the data planes. That is the devices, of course, because that's what left in the devices now. The data planes don't care where they get the tables from, as long as they get them. On the other hand, the network engineer's job has now become much more easier to do. He only has to deal with the controller now, not every device individually. Plus, on the controller, you would typically have applications running graphic user interfaces, which makes dealing with control plane even more easier than before now. Moreover, the controller will let you automate a lot of stuff, unlike legacy devices. Think ahead of that, guys. 
your devices are simply data planes now. They don't carry as much software, no operating systems, no routing protocols, nothing. As a result, the devices became much more cheaper, reducing your capital expenditure of buying them in the first place. Only the controller needs to be intelligent now. Now, there are commercial controllers out there which you have to pay for a license once to use them in production. Or you could just use some of the very powerful open source and free controller softwares like Odeal and Onus. Your operational expenditures also decrease now because you only have to operate the controllers and most of it is also automated. Considering all that, it absolutely makes a lot of sense to adapt to the SDN. That's just one model of SDN I just explained to you. SDN is not limited to that today. There are several different models of SDN in which it simplifies and makes your future networks more manageable. These several models are adapted and backed by several vendors who are basically betting their money and resources on one of these kind of models. Cisco, for instance, have their own model for SDN called ACI, Application Centric Infrastructure. Essentially, the goal of all SDN models is somewhat similar, to make future networks more agile and easily manageable. SDN uses a bunch of technologies like virtualization, containers, and advanced packet encapsulation techniques like VXLANs and so on. To learn more about SDN and deep dive into the technology, join me at RST Forum. You can check the courseware out at www.rstforum.net. The course provides you a lot of hands-on labs, which helps you in better understanding of the concepts practically. This is Mandar Lokegaukar signing off today. See you on the other side.